Welcome to the Spirit of Detroit show. My name is Dr. Ural Hill, and today we have an excellent guest. His name is Dr. Loomis Hilaire. He is the director of the Gear Up program at the University of Michigan, which reaches out to public high schools and public high school systems in and around Michigan, preparing kids with, uh, a, with goals and information about going to college. And also, he's the coordinator of the Martin Luther King Jr. activities at the University of Michigan. I'm excited about this show because this young man has traveled the same path that I did. Uh, I spent 16 years at Morehouse. He's a, he graduated from Morehouse, so he's a Morehouse man. And they always say you can always tell a Morehouse man, but you can't tell him much. I'm really excited about him being here today because down there they build strong young men who are confident and have a spirit of excellence. He also uh, went to graduate school at my alma mater, the University of Michigan, and got his PhD in educational psychology right here in the greater Detroit metro area. So as he, you know, he ended up staying, and as he decided to stay and serve the community, um, he really did something that many of us don't do that graduate from the University of Michigan or that are from this area. We don't end up coming back to our own communities and serving. So today uh, we interview Dr. Loomis Hilaire on the Spirit of Detroit show. Dr. Hilaire, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? I always like to get people to introduce themselves okay. as well because I might leave something out or, or I might just go overboard. I don't know. You go. <laughs> Well, first of all, let me say thank you for the invite to the show. Okay. Um, and you, you brought up, you know, giving back to the community. So when I talk about myself, one of the first things I like to talk about is how I was born in Louisiana, moved to San Francisco when I was 10 years old, and grew up in Hunters Point in San Francisco. And it's mm -hmm. one of uh, what people would characterize as the hood, okay. um, low SES neighborhood. And when I left, I was clear that one of the things I wanted to do is work with students and work with schools and really go in and tell students that they can learn. And that's what I wanted my life's work to be about. And mm -hmm. I've been fortunate that one of the school districts we work with is Highland Park. And so the neighborhood I grew up in, HP, I now can give back to Highland Park, which is also HP. So um, for me, my work and my life is about making sure that I, the people around me, um, I, I'm part of them growing and developing. Yes, you know, I was born in Highland Park, as a matter of fact. I didn't know that. Yes, and tell us about, I mean, you were just, there in Highland Park and you were, didn't you speak at their graduation from Highland Park High School? I did. Gaining educational awareness and readiness for undergraduate programs is, uh, gear, so Gear Up is the program that I directed at the University of Michigan. Okay. All right. Yeah. We're going to take a break and on the Spirit of Detroit show and we're going to come back and we're going to talk more about Gear Up and all the activities that Dr. Hilaire does to uh, enrich students, not only at University of Michigan, but especially those students in the communities that may one day go to college. Hold on, and, and we'll be back with uh, the Spirit of Detroit show. Hey, Sarah. Oh, my gosh, she's so cute. But do it like I taught you. Love the new tattoo, Sarah. Dude, that's Sarah. Sarah. The girl in the pink shirt, that's the girl I was telling you about. Theater 2 on your left. Hey, Sarah. What color underwear today? Hey, Sarah. So when are you going to post something new? Anything you post online, anyone can see. So think before you post. All right, you're back with us on the Spirit of Detroit show. My name is Dr. Ural Hill, and my guest today is Dr. Loomis Hilaire, the director of the Gear Up program at the University of Michigan. Uh, Dr. Hilaire, let's begin with the broad-based nature of the Gear Up program. Again, what's that acronym stand for, Gear Up? Gaining Early Awareness and Readiness for Undergraduate Programs. All right, Gaining Early Awareness, early awareness and, readiness. and Readiness for Undergraduate Programs. Okay, yes. it's self-explanatory. So your goal is to get to middle schoolers and high schoolers? Yes, so the, the, the model is this. We start working with uh, students in the seventh grade and we follow that one cohort of students all the way through their first year in college. Okay. And what we do is we make sure they have all the information they need about the benefits of college and access to college. And so we really give them a sense of what college is like. What, is, what does it mean to be a college student? What does college look like? How do you get there? 
um, and really try to provide them resources. The great thing about our program is it's a program that works with students, it works with parents, and it works with teachers. So we partner with school districts and we go in and we do programming with the students in the schools. We put on parent programs during the weekends and during the summer. We have a summer residential program that is really great and we have a campus visits and we also do Saturday programming at times. That reminds me, that's not much different from the Summer Science Academy at Morehouse. Okay. I mean, you know, in some of the outreach. So this Gear Up program, again, it's broader than only the one that comes out of the University of Michigan. You said something to the, I mean, the extent that Gear Up is statewide. So Exactly. So Gear Up is actually a federal program, and the state of Michigan wrote for the Gear Up grant, um, the statewide grant in 2006. So each of the public universities in Michigan have a Gear Up program. I just direct the one at the University of Michigan Ann Arbor campus. Okay. And... Now, when you go in, how often do you go out to the schools? Is that what you, what's your normal day like? Normal day. Well, one, there's probably not a normal day. <laughs> um, and each of the gear up programs function very differently because they have a different number of schools. They're in different communities, so the needs of the schools are different. With our program, we look to go into the schools at least once a month, okay. um, but hopefully several times a month. And we have campus visits where we bring up about 50 students per visit and we have about nine visits each semester across our different schools. When you say bring up 50 students, bring up 50 students to Ann Arbor? To Ann Arbor, to the campus and we have them spend a day with the college student leaders which is one of the biggest assets of our program is the college students being able to talk to middle and high school students about this is what college is, this is the benefits of college, why you need to go and this is what, how you can get there. What do you get a lot of times from the students? What do you hear from the high school students, because you have Southfield Public Schools, Ypsilanti Public Schools, Ypsilanti, and Highland Park. And Highland Park. So, what do you get from the students? What do you hear a lot? What is, you know, when you begin to present? Well, I think one of the things that we, we hear a lot is students being excited about uh, working with college students. They're excited about their future, they want to go to college. So, one of the things that is easy for us to always understand about students is that they get it. College is important. That's, okay. that's not anything that we have to really focus on a lot. The next two big questions is can students feel that I can go and do I really want to go? And most students want to go. Once they see college students and they see the campus, they see that it's fun, they see that they can really have a lot of control over their own education, they want to go. The next big question is how can I make sure I'm successful when I get there? So students are excited and then one of their big questions is can I handle the material? Right, right. Now. So it's awareness, creating that sense of awareness. Because now, you know, reality states that you have a 61% dropout rate with African-American males in the state of Michigan. Now, what are you seeing in your schools? I mean, how long have you been doing this? And are you seeing a difference between how African-American males respond to you and the average student, whether they be, you know, do you? That's a good question. So been doing this work since 2001. Okay. And this is Gear Up's second cycle. So I've been doing Gear Up since 2006 and we're in our second cycle. We're currently working with eighth grade students. Okay. I will say that African American males tend to respond like everyone else and I believe part of it, a large part of it, is our model. When we approach students, um, we're very big on focusing in on the student first, like who are you? Mm -hmm. And really getting to, to them to explore what are the things they're strong at, and what are the interests that they have. And I think when you do that with people, they just naturally open up and respond. When we do campus visits, we, it never fails that some teacher or counselor will say, wow, you know, I've never seen that student react that way. Awesome. And um, part of it is, I think, you know, you go off to on a field trip. Um, another large part of it is the college students, someone who's in college right now. I mean, you know, our age, we tell students, this is college and this is what it's like. They may not listen as much when they are conversing with a college student who says, listen, I'm in this space right now. You and I, we look alike, we sound alike, we're into the same things. If I can do it, you can do it. And that sparks something in a student that says, you know what, I can do it. So, you know, we know students struggle in school, but they do respond very well when they, when they interact with the college students. And we make them know that this is about you. It's not just about this institution because Gear Up is not a program that recruits just for the University of Michigan. It's recruiting students to go to college. All right. So you follow a cohort and you said you're in the second cycle. So the first group you worked with, are they freshmen now? You said 2001. 2006 is 2006 when, when you the started. first That's cycle right. started. 
So 2006, that's five, six years. So you do have a group that's in college now. Yes. Mm -hmm. what, did, what did the numbers say to you about that class? The numbers? Where are they? I mean. They're, they're at various institutions across the university, uh, across the state of Michigan. Okay. Um, we have a good number of students at the University of Michigan, some who work with me now as college student leaders and as assistants. Wow. Um, some who went to college prep schools and they say that you know even though they were at a college prep school that was a very much an added value in being in a college prep program where they got extra information about what they needed to do to get to college and be successful. All right. You know your own experience going to Morehouse for undergrad mm -hmm. and going to Michigan for grad school so you have the historically black college and university experience and the public white institution experience, both at a high level. There's a magical connection yes. between Michigan and Morehouse, I believe. Yes. Uh, tell me about uh, what would you, I mean, what your experience was in the two different institutions as it relates to both excellence and uh, cultural, as a cultural African-American male being in those two institutions. For the okay. parents out there who are trying to make the decision on whether or not my son or daughter should go to Spelman or Michigan State or, yes. you know. I'll say it like this. Um, I remember when I first came to Michigan and my best friend, she said that she went to Michigan State because she grew up in Detroit, was predominantly black and wanted to have an experience where she was around people that, you know, weren't like her. Okay. Let's hold that point. Okay. I, I've kind of run over. We're going to come back. Just hold that idea. And we're on the spirit of Detroit. Uh, don't go anywhere. Uh, maybe get yourself a, a cool drink and come on back to the Spirit of Detroit show, and we'll be right back with you. Recycling Detroit starts with you. Do you recycle? Did you know Detroit recycles? We started curbside collection in different neighborhoods. It's getting bigger and moving to other neighborhoods. And anyone can recycle here and here. What we do with our trash, the reflection of our city. A city that's full of life and optimism. And we need to take pride in our city. It's one small change. that starts a chain reaction. Detroit Recycles. Hello, we're back with the Spirit of Detroit show. This is Dr. Ural Hill. And I have my guest today, Dr. Loomis Hilaire, the director of the Gear Up program. He's also the coordinator of the Martin Luther King uh, Committee uh, there at University of Michigan and all the activities they do. So we're going to get a chance to talk about both. But we had a really poignant question as we took our break. And he personally went to Morehouse College. He's a Morehouse man, and he's a Michigan man, uh, just like myself. <laughs> He got his graduate degree at University of Michigan in educational psych. And I asked him about that experience. So for you parents who are out there and you're trying to make a decision on your child going to college, whether they should go to a historically black institution uh, or a public white institution, uh, and this is a big question for a lot of parents right now as we look into next year, uh, what would be your advice to them based on your own experience? Based on my own experience, my advice, what I would tell parents is this, Morehouse is an excellent institution. If you want your son to go to a place will, where they will develop all the different parts of himself and understand his position as an African American male in this society, Morehouse, without a doubt, is a great place, an excellent institution to send him. Um, I will also say that no matter what institution you, your child decides to go to, it's a very personal decision. I went to Morehouse because it was a small school. It was in the South. I'm originally from the South. I knew Morehouse um, was in Atlanta, warm weather, beautiful people, and it had uh, an, a, a great reputation. And so when you think about schools, it's not just about is it predominantly black or is it a predominantly white institution or a mixed institution. It's that and it's also the size. Um, does it does do they have the majors um, that your child want that is your child is interested in? I think another big piece of it too is how close to home. How close to home? How important is it they be close to home? And of course, you can't forget how much will it cost. Right. So my advice to parents is always really listen to your child about what what are their needs, what are their desires, and know that you can transfer institutions. Some people came to Morehouse after a couple of years after being at another institution and vice versa. Right. You know, I, I spent, I went to graduate school at Morehouse School of Religion of the Interdenominational Theological mm -hmm. Center and then uh, spent 16 years serving Morehouse College. 
in the King Chapel with Dean Carter, mm -hmm. if you remember, Martin Luther King Chapel. And, you know, that's why I want to move to the Martin Luther King events. Uh, he became my mentor. And, and uh, Martin Luther King, after he had passed, it's just when I got to Morehouse, and even after going to Michigan, you know, I went to, I had a scholarship, an academic scholarship to go to Morehouse as an undergrad. And I didn't take it. I decided to go to Michigan. And I went to Michigan. In my junior year, I visited a homecoming down there, and I saw the cultural activities, mm -hmm. and I said, oh, my God, I really <laughs> missed something. So I ended up going to grad school there, and you did it in reverse. But uh, Gear Up is a powerful piece on raising the awareness of young people. Do you, do you follow the numbers, and are they different? What, what makes the numbers from Ypsilanti versus Highland Park versus Southfield different? And are you in predominantly black communities in those three ar arenas? Or what's, give me some feeling for the so, difference between those three public school systems that you go into. So all three of the, those school districts are um, predominantly African-American school okay. districts. And um, the numbers, school districts will have different numbers. But for us, with Europe, the most important thing is the extent to which the school district r is ready to work with us. And okay. all three of the districts are very responsive and, and have been responsive to working with Gear Up. Okay. So, um, because it, when you think about it, schools have a lot of work to do with students. Right. And their time with students is very protected. So when we can go into a district and they actually say, we will give you some time during the school day to come and um, do college readiness work, we know the school is committed to the students getting to college. So for these three districts, um, college readiness is a large part of what they do, so we've been real pleased with being able to work with them. Now, you, you, uh, we had a conversation the other day, and you were sharing that uh, you wanted to go to, uh, to another level with the kind of work that you do mm -hmm. in the schools, not just coming in and presenting, but trying to create either some curriculum-driven dr dynamics uh, about college readiness. Could you expound on that a little bit? Definitely, Dr. definitely. Lane. So when you think about um, where education is today, right, there, it used to be the common language that th there are certain students who are college material. Okay. And of course now, um, the, at a federal level, state levels, and district and local levels, they're saying that all students need to be prepared to go to college because all students have the capacity to go to college, That's some right. form of college. That's right. Um, and so schools are really trying to work through well, how do we integrate this whole college readiness in our curriculum? Yes. And um, uh, schools are making a lot of headway on that, but at the same time, they still have programs like Gear Up coming in. So just naturally, when you're working on integrating something into your curriculum and you have this other entity that's doing it with your students and parents, the, the question is how do you come together and work a little bit more closely? Currently with the schools, we come in and we do workshops, but we're thinking of through how can we do these workshops, give them to the teacher, so they can integrate it in their curriculum. Okay. All right. Well, you know, let's talk a little bit about Martin Luther King Committee. I, first of all, that's an awesome piece because awareness is everything. And I do believe, you know, now our technological and global society has gotten to the point where you're going to need some college. If it's community college, if it's, you're going to need voc edu vocational educational training to do something in our society. Uh, the reality is that there's even a new industry called the prison industrial complex that is there for you if you don't get some training right. and you can't do something. I want to thank you, Dr. Hilaire, for sharing with me today. We're going to come back and we're going to just talk a moment about the events uh, that you have on campus and in and around maybe the city for Martin Luther King and raising our awareness about being your own leader. Uh, we'll be back on the Spirit of Detroit show in a moment. Just uh, go get yourself a cold drink and come on back. Thank you very much. My name is Caitlin Brown. I am 17 years old and am a senior in high school. Since I was five, I attended St. Clair's All Girl Private School. But when my dad's job moved us east, I started to attend a public school for the first time in my life. As soon as I started high school, the other students started making jokes about how I look and dress. As time went on, I finally made two friends, Angela and Nathan. However, all this came to an end quickly when Nathan cheated on Angela with me. It wasn't until after word got out that I realized he was Angela's boyfriend. After that, no matter how hard I tried to make things better, people just hated me more and more. And after six months of this nonstop torture and crying myself to sleep, I just couldn't take it anymore. My name is Caitlin Brown. I'm 17 years old 
and I took my own life yesterday because of high school bullying. Yeah, welcome back to the Spirit of Detroit show. My name is Dr. Ural Hill, and we've been talking to Dr. Loomis Hilaire, the director of the Gear Up program at the University of Michigan, which reaches out into currently Highland Park, Ypsilanti, and uh, the Southfield Public Schools, getting raising the awareness of students about college. I want to say one more thing about that, and then we're going to move into some other activities that are inspirational. Uh, especially as we come into Martin Luther King weekend and the inaugural weekend. Um, Dr. Hilaire, we talked about infusing college readiness into the programming, maybe curriculum of the schools. Mm -hmm. um, you know, certainly when we look at the statistics on uh, dropout rates in certain areas here in this country, uh, sometimes we're shocked when we see uh, the race. I know for, you know, I, I focus on African-American males because they're in a, certainly an emergency circumstance now. Mm -hmm. And I know from the SHOT report um, that African-American males in Michigan drop out at a rate of 61% right now as we speak. And so uh, when we talk about the fact that 90% of them will uh, end up tied to the prison system, what is your response to something like that? Um, what do you have in place? I mean, you're there in the schools. Um, you may not come into context. Well, maybe seventh and eighth grade. What do you do differently in seventh and eighth grade? Because normally they're dropping out in ninth and tenth grade. So what do you do? What do we do specifically around? Around student retention while they're in high school, or do you do anything? I know. So currently our program does not do anything specifically targeted around student retention. Um, I guess you can look at our program not as an intervention program, but more of a promotion okay. um, prevention program okay. than an intervention around students who are dropping out. The schools that we are in, um, Southfield and Ypsilanti and Highland Park, Dropping dr the dropout rates are not the big a big concern of ours. Now in okay. Highland Park, you know, people leaving the city, just moving out of the city, is a, is an issue and challenge as as is in um, a lot of places in Detroit. Okay, all right. And f how many students are in your program? Uh, we approximately have nine hundred thousand students. Of, that's a lot of kids. If, and so a parent wouldn't necessarily have to call you once you go into a school. All those kids in that particular cohort. Yes, if they are in the eighth grade in the school district we're in this year, they're a gear up student. Next year, if they are in ninth grade, they're a gear up student. Even if they weren't part of gear up before, once they're in the, the grade that we're, we're working with, they're part of our program. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Well, that's a powerful piece because today uh, the question is not whether or not you'll go to college, is which college will you go to? Right. And will it be um, our society's at a point where to get a job and to get work. And, you know, it used to be here in Detroit, what you could do is graduate from high school and then you could go into the factories and get a job that might make you $80,000 a year. And then that's how most of us, our parents, you know, my, in my native Detroit cohort, went to college. Our parents worked in the factories. My dad did. I know in a whole lot. And they made good money. My dad ended up becoming a businessman. But my point is that's not a, a, an expected outcome now right. with the uh, fall and we, we're sitting in the backdrop of the GM headquarters with with the fall of the auto industry and the changes technologically we're out of the industrial revolution and we're past all into far into the technological revolution and the global society so the jobs that are available are engineering jobs for engineers mm -hmm. you know focus hope and those have done a great work with uh, training machinists and creating uh, engineering programs right here in the city. But I, I, I think that program that you have, that's a wonderful program. I want to talk more about some of your other responsibilities. You're a University of Michigan uh, staffer, and that you also have a responsibility for the Martin Luther King activities. Now, this is Martin Luther King weekend. Right. This is the 21st. We, we celebrate his birthday, Dr. King. And, just so happens that the inauguration will happen on the same day, the second inauguration right. of the first black president of the United States, Barack Obama. Uh, can you share with us some of the activities you have going on in Ann Arbor? Highlight some of them. I saw the book. You have right. a whole lot going on, but share. Yeah, so on Monday the 21st, MLK holiday, there's at least 20 events happening on the campus that day. 
Okay. Um, some of the key events I would highlight is the keynote lecture by Morris Dees. Okay. Morris Dees is a co-founder of the Southern Poverty Law Center. He's very and good. he's done a lot of work around um, dismantling hate groups in America. Another uh, big event that I'm looking forward to is a speech uh, lecture by Clarence Jones, who is one of the um, speech writers. He was one of the speech writers for Dr. King, and he actually worked on the I Have a Dream speech. So this Monday, for me, is an amazing day because it's the 50th anniversary of the most iconic speech of Dr. King, um, I Have a Dream speech. Yes. And it, the, during that same day is when, as you said before, Barack Obama is um, having his second inauguration as our first black president. Um, and, you know, just one year after Dr. Martin Luther King has a monument erected on the mall in D.C., the only non-president um, to have uh, a monument erected in his honor on the mall. So um, those are some of the key events, and I think that today is, is going to be a huge day. Another event I would like to point out is um, work with youth. So there's an a, a annual MLK Day sponsored by the School of Education, and Gear Up is also doing some things with the U of M Dearborn. And um, so it, it's going to be a big day. Students are going to be involved from elementary all the way through college. That is awesome. Boy, you're, you're doing the whole, boy, you really are actively involved, not only at Michigan, but throughout the community. I, we hope that a whole lot of people get a chance to participate. I think that Morris D's that speech is going to be huge. Yeah. Um, certainly, Dr. King would want us to understand that although we have a black president, um, the first black president in U.S. history, some of us would think that we've made it that the civil rights movement, the dream has, uh, was successful, mm -hmm. the dream has become a reality. Unfortunately, there's a lot of work to be done. A lot of work. A lot of work. We have mass incarceration uh, in a colorblind society, as uh, author Michelle Alexander has, has shown us. There's a whole new challenge to this generation of human rights workers. Um, we thank you for coming today. Uh, to the Spirit of Detroit show. The Gear Up program, if anyone wants to call you about any of the events or, or call you about the Gear Up program, mm -hmm. if a student wants to get involved, can you look into that camera and share the number, how they could get in touch with yes. you? Yes. If you would like to get in touch with me about Gear Up or even the MLK events at the University of Michigan, I'm in the Office of Academic Multicultural Initiatives. The number is 734-936-1055. And for MLK events, you could also go to the website, mlksymposium.umich.edu. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Loomis Allaire, for sharing with us on the Spirit of Detroit show. Uh, this is Dr. Ural Hill, and we've had a wonderful show today. Uh, remember, uh, just as the statue that sits outside of the Coleman Young Municipal Center, the Spirit of Detroit, uh, right behind that statue, there's a quote, uh, 2 Corinthians 3.17, and it says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, mm -hmm. there is freedom. So we wish that freedom for you. Have a wonderful Martin Luther King weekend and a wonderful second inauguration. And we'll see you next time on the Spirit of Detroit. Thank you, Dr. Hill. Uh, thank you, Appreciate Dr. Allaire. All right. All right.